Good morning, Masoka Universe. Before going to work, I watched all those highlights and I'm gonna give you now my rundown uh, just before I head into the car. I thought it's safer this way. And since uh, Big Dota doesn't have school today, we can leave a little bit later, which makes this all a little bit easier. Again, five qualification groups were played today. I watched one game with most of the tension, which is Spain against Sweden, and on a separate screen I had uh, Northern Macedonia against Austria, because, you know, home, my home nation, I gotta watch the, what's happening there. Spain won, we'll talk about them a little bit later, uh, was definitely an interesting match. But I wanna run down through the groups in alphabetical order, and we'll start in Group A, where um, the first result that we're gonna look at is the Czechs against Montenegro. 3-0 uh, was a relatively easy victory. The Czechs now are making up for their poor start to qualification. The uh, game in that group in the evening, though, was Bulgaria against Kosovo, um, which was a do-or-die game for both of these. I mean, another draw for Bulgaria and Kosovo would have been um, ending their hopes as we would have a uh, loss. The game itself was quite an interesting one with Rashica giving Kosovo the lead in the 14th. Uh, just before halftime, Popov equalizes for uh, Bulgaria, uh, in Sofia of course. And then in the second half it starts out brightly for Bulgaria who take a 55th minute lead. And everything looks okay. But Muriki uh, equalizes just 10 minutes later and it's 2-2 and it's headed for this dreaded draw. And then in stoppage time uh, Rashani gets the win for Kosovo, their first ever win in a qualifying campaign. You can imagine that huge celebrations ensued, uh, at least on the Kosovo side. I'm, was, I personally was gutted when I saw that Bulgaria lost that game, because of course my wife being from Bulgaria, I have lots of sympathies there. Uh, after a Nations League campaign that was quite good, Bulgaria now is, had a really, really uh, bad start to qualifying campaign. If you look at the table now, we have in Group A England still on top. The Czechs now level with England, but of course they ha uh, have a game more. Kosovo remains in contention with five points. Montenegro and Bulgaria, both with two points, are looking pretty much out of, out of it. And, you know, for those, they have to avoid the drop to last place. On to Group B, where Serbia comes back, I don't want to say from the dead, but they uh, strike back after the humiliation at the hands of Ukraine. Um, winning 4-1, Mitrovic getting two goals, Luka Jovic, the new Real Madrid star, getting uh, a third one just before halftime. And basically you thought, yeah, they're going to make up the whole goal difference. But you could already see with the empty crowds in Belgrade, I think it was... Uh, there is a lot of stuff going wrong. Look at the comments on my Ukraine Dominate Serbia video for a uh, um, user wrote the lowdown on what was happening there. So it's not everyone behind Serbia, let's put it that way. Uh, Lithuania gets a penalty to Novikovas uh, in the 71st and then Lajic makes it a 92nd, a 4-1 victory for Serbia. So they will remain in contention for the spot. I mean, in the end, it was only a loss in Ukraine. That's something you can make up. A goal difference only comes when you are equal in points. Uh, and, you know, you may lose the head-to-head -to, -head to Ukraine, which is in UEFA qualifying is even more important. Um, Ukraine, though, after 5-0 against Serbia, only 1-0 against Luxembourg. That was surprising to me. I thought they might get more, but this again tells you Luxembourg is becoming a very well-organized team that is hard to beat down. They might well decide who makes it. I don't think that Luxembourg will make it, but Luxembourg can well decide who makes it to um, Euro 2020 between Portugal, Ukraine and Serbia. And now if you look at the table, Ukraine really looks like cruising. They have the Godora in Portugal, they have 10 points. Um, Luxembourg now is, is on four, as is Serbia. Um, and now they are, it's down to goal difference because they haven't played each other. Portugal, yes, they only have, they have a nil-nil and a one-one to start the campaign, both at home to Ukraine and Serbia. So they better pick up points uh, in fall, which I think they surely will do. Lithuania, one point is less than the table. On to Group D, 
where Ireland uh, has a crappy win over Gibraltar. But first we have uh, Denmark against Georgia 5-1, which was basically the game that I chose here uh, as the one to watch. Um, Denmark took a lead through Dolberg, but then um, Lobjanice equalized. And you thought, oh, there might be something uh, coming for Georgia, but it was not to be. Eriksen from a penalty spot, Dolberg after the break, uh, Paulsen and Breathwaite make it very comfortable for Denmark to get the vital three points uh, from that fixture, which to a very empty stadium, I liked actually that on the one end of the stadium, they had the huge Danish flag with the Viking behind was an impressive sight. It would be more impressive if uh, there were spectators there. Uh, in the group, the other game in the group, as I said, was Ireland against Gibraltar. Very scrappy win. It was an own goal and it was a stoppage time goal to break down Gibraltar. But now Ireland also, similar to Ukraine, a very commanding start. 10 points out of four games um, leads the table. Uh, but, you know, they have uh, four games played, Denmark only three with five uh, points, Switzerland uh, only two games played, uh, four points, uh, Georgia three and Gibraltar is a zero. On to Group F, uh, where Norway beat the Faroe Islands 2-0, was a somewhat lucky win, the Faroe Islands hit the post. Of course, Norway was better overall. Actually, if you see uh, highlights, I actually like Ferry against uh, Spain. It was, I like the stadium where you can see all the surroundings. And it looks to be a modern stadium there. Romania beats up 4 0 Malta, which are all vital uh, wins for them because we know between Spain and Sweden, those are the two favorites in the group. And they met in Madrid, and that's why I decided to watch that game. This was clearly the marquee game uh, yesterday. And it was maybe even for about five minutes, but then Spain really ratcheted up. I mean, lots of possession, lots of passing moves. And Sweden, who was playing in all yellow, which I found odd, at one point they could only defend their own box anymore. Yes, they had the advantage in the box with the two central defenders uh, heading away everything that they can. But going forward, I think after the fifth minute, uh, Sweden barely crossed the halfway line anymore. Spain put up a lot of pressure and especially between uh, minute 14 and 16 uh, they had four glorious chances where uh, it was saved by Robin Olsen who basically was yelling at everyone there was a wide shot there was a nice shot by I think it was uh, Rodrigo oh no Aparejo who was saved then a nice move with a header from Ramos after the ensuing corner uh, really great stuff from Spain and then they even got the goal uh, that was wrongly waved up my offside. It was um, even the long pass by Moreno. I think Moreno to Parejo and the uh, pass in. They were all not offside, but it was called off by the Scottish referee and there's no VAR, which was a shame. That was a finish of this attacking sequence in two minutes with at least four great chances. Then Sweden was actually relaxing and you could see the momentum was getting out of Spain a little bit. Um, there was a lengthy break um, at uh, the midtime because Klaasson uh, uh, got injured. They, I think they, for at least four or five minutes, they were taking care of him. He had a really uh, weird twisted ankle. And uh, this was also then a yellow card for Alba because he was complaining, which was the only yellow card in the game. The game was actually quite fair, uh, given the high stakes. Sweden hang on to the nil-nil at halftime, uh, although so thanks to getting very little stoppage time at the end. Uh, and the second half, it was a matter of being patient, patient, patient. And um, just when you thought that maybe Sweden could hang on, 64th uh, cross in hits the hand. And the penalty is given that Sergio Ramos uh, converts quite confidently. And so Sweden needed to come out. I think at that point Spain had 16 corners to nil of Sweden. Spain then took it a little bit easier. Uh, Sweden needed to come out, but you know, uh, not much uh, coming from uh, Sweden, to be honest. And so uh, in the end, um, Spain gets another penalty in the 85th. Morata was coming on. He was actually slated to come on right uh, after right before the penalty, first penalty was scored. 
he wins a penalty he's really uh, wrestled down in the box uh, which was then um, Ramos who would have taken a penalty gives Morata the ball great gesture even given that yeah Morata played for Real Madrid but now he's playing for Atleti uh, and he slots it home 2 nil. and just two minutes later Yarsabal makes a wonderful shot to make it 3 nil for Spain which is the right result here uh, I was hoping that Sweden get something out of it but not the way they played if Sweden would have put up a little bit more of a fight but Spain really 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 put a lot of pressure and underlined how great uh, uh, that they are the team to beat in this group uh, possession ridiculously almost 75 uh, percent corner 16 to 1 that tells you a lot uh, if you look at the other statistics the aerial duels yes even there Spain had the advantage uh, which is quite uh, amazing um, look at total passes 845 to 2998 uh, and almost no long passes it was complete domination by the Spanish and now they lead this group with 12 points four out of four Sweden they have seven points meaning uh, they still look all right Romania seven yes they have they're the only team with a, with a chance I think Nova Malta and Ferry Islands will not have any say in that group uh, let's go to the last group which is group G Austria's group Slovenia makes up for the loss uh, against Austria with a 5-0 against uh, Latvia away from home which is quite an impressive uh, result Northern Macedonia Austria Austria having many many chances but they're going down by a horrible own goal uh, one nil but they turn around uh, before they have one one they hit the post the Woodbrook was also hit by uh, Northern Macedonia right when it was one uh, one nil I think even uh, but then the second half it's all Austria Arnautovic was a brace and that was that um, so for one Austria remains in contention and then the big one uh, Poland Israel Poland playing in the very interesting uh, anniversary jersey which I have and have which is a look that Poland never had but it's kind of a Polish flag on the jersey so I thought this is actually a nice it's something different and a nice look uh, probably like it even slightly better than the current jersey although the current jersey is not that bad it was all Poland in that one uh, Piontek in the 35th breaks down the Israeli defense who are playing in the blue jersey that was darker blue than uh, the ones that they have regularly slated so I gotta check that one out Piontek continues his scoring streak it's the third one and you know as a Milan fan I'm happy that Piontek is scoring uh, at any time Lewandowski adds a penalty that was very again of a handball you know it went off here too no VAR but you know uh, it was an unnatural position so it makes it easy Grozitski in the 58 makes it 3 nil and then Kajor in the 84th makes it even 4 nil. so it was all Poland uh, in this game Poland asserts themselves in the group quite uh, emphatically 4-4 four four with 12 points and now Israel Austria Slovenia I think those are the teams that fight for the second spot Israel having a slight advantage with seven points over you know Austria now with six having a home game against Israel and Slovenia uh, on five may have a chance I think there's us limits probably between Israel and Austria and if everything goes by plan Austria probably will get the second spot although they had a pretty tough start to the campaign well that's it next euros tomorrow I probably will do the video from the car I uh, have to see how it will go uh, let, let me know what you thought about the games uh, which ones you you were watching whether you agree with my assessments give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these and I will talk to you soon bye hey there I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too also please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel all things my soccer universe and with that I want to wish you a wonderful day